visitor. Word travels fast, it seems. As fast as time flies. Which makes sense, given that they're both a type of bird. No doubt. You came for the Argonian known as Two Tails. I am he. Hmm. As you should be. It's not every day you get to meet the first hero of the Fourth Era. And champion of Tamriel. With the Divine's blessing, I've been granted a great gift. A weapon to conquer an ancient evil that has awoken from centuries of slumber. That's why the bards sing my name from meat halls to ship decks, in castles and colleges and sometimes in your head. Our hero, our hero, claims a warrior's heart. I tell you, I tell you, the dwarf and born comes. Dragonborn? Hmm? Do I look like I have wings? No, I have horns and feathers and walk on three feet. Just like dwarves. Besides, in war, fire is best fought with fire. And you don't bring a dragon to a dwarf fight, not unless it's... Dwarvenborn! Nothing else can combat the infinite armies of Mazenok, the God Eater. Your worst enemy and your best friend, as you are nothing but a dog to him. And like a good doggy, he's going to make you fetch dirt. Then bring it to the surface while his army of centurions flog you with brass whips. Mazenok aims to devour the gods. At least the ones that live underground. And in doing so, propel our world into... Chaos. But as it is written in the Histbark, and inscribed in the assortment of spoons I keep in my pocket, all is not lost. For there is one that even the mad dwarf and his legion of machines fear. In their tongue, I am known as Thuamertzin, Dwarvenborn. They say he was a gifted dwarf, blessed with the ability to craft, repair, and if need be, marry machines, simply by touching them. Some even say he learned the way of the voice, that he could direct his spiders to sweep the floors by issuing a simple three-word command. Something like broom floor sweep, or beep boop bop, or insert tube here. You know, common phrases of the machine tongue. Then, one day, while renovating an old cave, he came across a magic scroll written Inside a tube of fungus. Inside was a 100,000 year old prophecy. One that foretold 
what already happened 75,000 years ago at the dawn of time. It told of the age of the soup people who flowed through the underground rivers of Nern like a creamy magma and were extremely delicious. It warned of a day in the distant past when the soup would turn cold. So cold it congealed. These jelly blobs and their scabs would be what they've become. The early beginnings of man and beast. I told you they were delicious, didn't I? Seems that's reason enough. Only what the gods foretold. They say Mazanuk will come from the west, charging down a mountain led by an avalanche of metal boulders. Spheres. Behind them will be the mad dwarf himself. Riding in a steam-powered war carriage, pulled along by dwarven mammoths. They say when Mazanok makes his charge, the ore veins across Skyrim will melt, and the rivers will run bright with metal. Only the dwarvenborn possesses the power to stop him. From here in the Eyrie, I can watch for his descent, as well as create a strategic barrier to protect myself from his spies. It's the only place that's completely safe. Mazanok has his spiders everywhere, hiding in the dirt like eight-legged mud crabs. They're out there right now. Burrowed in the mud, not forty paces from where we stand. He was in the grass and the weeds, like an insect's antenna. Only these antenna aren't like the kind you find on a bug. No, attached at the end are magical listening spheres, painted white to look like flowers. Cut in balls, fungal pods, tulips. <laughs> His eyes and ears are everywhere, searching for the one they call Dwarvenborn. Conversely, there isn't a section of wall or piece of dwarven metal that I haven't blessed with my machine hand. It's completely quarantined. I was fishing near the coast of uh, Nibbon Bay in Cyrodiil when I saw a bearded mage standing by the bank. In his hand was the ugliest fishing staff I had ever seen. But when he raised it to the sky, a massive island rose right out of the water. On it were rocks, chiseled into the shape of dwarven heads. Only they weren't rocks, but cheese. Then, waving the staff around some more, he conjured three beggars to eat away at the cheese rocks, from its mustache down to its chin. Their efforts revealed a secret portal, a gateway to the Dwemer homeworld. Curious, I followed him into the bay, 
I swam, he walked. I trailed him to the edge of the shoreline. Just as he was about to enter the portal, then he stopped and turned in my direction. I was hiding behind some brush, but I could have sworn he winked at me. Turns out there was just something in his eye, specifically the arrow that I shot in his face for winking at me. Didn't have a choice. He fired first. He just made an island come out of the bay. Now he was winking at me. For all I knew, he was going to waggle his fingers and cross his eyes and pull my heart out of my throat. As Dwarven born, I possess what is known as the Machine Hand. Simply by placing my palms on a device, I can disable it uh, permanently. I am now on a great quest to place my hands upon as many dwarven machinations as possible, so that I may render the God Eater's army inert. It doesn't matter if it's a broken spider, or fully operational Centurion. One touch for my machine hand, and no smith can repair it. It may be your servant now, but when Mazenok sounds the clarion call through his steam horn, all of Tamriel will be overrun by spider hordes. Spiders you repaired because you thought they would make nice pets. As it doesn't matter. Unfathomable. I am a hero, the champion of Mundus. You dare insult me by suggesting I raid dwarven ruins like a common bandit? I'll raid them like an uncommon bandit. You know, the kind that says please and thank you, and hates the predicament an unfair society has placed him in. As it doesn't matter if you do realize every machine you raise from its slumber is another garrison for the armies of Mazenok, don't you? Every innocent that dies as a result is someone you've killed, which makes you a murderer, not the good kind either. You know, the kind of murderer that's rich and attractive and has their own things. In Skyrim, they call these murderers Jarls. You, on the other hand, would just be another killer. As it doesn't matter if it's... What you speak of is a temporary solution. Pointless when you consider that Mazenok can resurrect his machines with his hands or his voice. Only the touch of my machine hand can render them ineffective. Every wire, every gear, every part becomes as immaterial as the void. Until next time. How can I help you?
I saw you with the Forsworn. By the old gods, that was something. Come on in. The Silverblood Inn has plenty of strong drink and clean rooms. Forsworn rampaging through the streets, as if business wasn't slow enough. This is the Silverblood Inn. I'll let you figure out who owns it by yourself. Ah, yes. Here, take a look at this. Remember, ale is cheaper than blood in Markar. They say the butcher's meat here is bloody. I prefer mine charred.
Looks like I'm about to collect on this day. Don't bother trying to keep up. How deep do you think this gorge is? 50 feet? 100? Well, it'll only be half as deep as our pockets when we find the artifact. That's right, I said we. My bodyguard just took a long way to Sophengard down Akaros' stomach. You're going to be his replacement. A 70-30 split. Not gold, of course, but labor. But you'll be doing the most of. We'll both take turns preparing the meals. I trust this arrangement works for you? Keep making that face if you agree. Good. I'm alive, aren't I? Of course, that's due in part to my chief survivor's guilt, the hiring of personal bodyguards. The payment will come when the artifact is secured. It also guarantees you won't be spinning your advance at the tavern. They must be removed, of course, if you want to explore these grounds. I will do my best to stay out of your way. You see the color of my robes. Of course you don't. They're camouflaged in the dark. So watch where you strike. What an odd thing to ask. That is, if you were my last bodyguard, I'd clearly explain to him what the artifact is. If he didn't like spending his winters in the void, I wouldn't have to repeat myself. This time, I will wait until we find it. Blink once if you understand. Twice if you're confused. No times if there's cobwebs in my hair. Excellent.
What is it? Did you find something? What an oblivion. I sincerely hope that you have turned back before reading this letter, as it would represent a new low in explore incompetence. Incompetence? We'll show that girl incompetence. Throw your brow if you agree. Good. Not a friend, an enemy. And the enemy of your client is the one person in this world you should hate the most. Because if she gets the lexicon first, it will mean death bells for the both of us. No one remembers who comes in second. For instance, can you name the second best chef in Tamriel after the gourmet? Exactly. We are competitors in the exploration game. Fierce ones at that. We'd probably get along if it didn't go against our best interests. I'm not sure what the current tally is, but it doesn't matter anymore. This discovery will top all our previous history. Yes, a teleportation device used by the Dunmo in ancient times to travel between their strongholds. In order to activate them, a cone-shaped object called an index is required. Are you following me so far? Give me a sign if you aren't. Wonderful. These indices are enchanted to form a link between a circle of chambers, allowing you to transport across great distances. Now, considering how advanced it was, there's an alternate theory that proposes some of this technology was borrowed from the Dwemer. Some even say it explains the disappearance of the entire Dwemer race. I should know. I'm the one who proposed that theory. Machines of such importance are typically safeguarded with a toner lock, and that requires an attunement sphere. Cameron has stayed a step ahead of us thus far, mostly with the help of that new bodyguard of hers, but if we get the lexicon, she'll be forced to bargain. In ancient times, the Chimer and Dwemer united against a common enemy to form the Kingdom of Resdain. The two races couldn't be more different, but when two siblings live under the same house, they can't help but influence each other. I had heard a lecture in Winterhold on how the Dwemer used charged soul gems to animate machines and harness the power of the gods. It also led to the circumstances of their disappearance, when they were seemingly teleported to an unknown place. It occurred to me that crystals were also used by the Chimer's descendants to charge the Propylon chambers, and thus a theory was born, roughly around the same time our Redguard friend was learning how to crawl. Yes, while the Dumber used enchanted indices, the Dwemer typically store all relevant data into a single lexicon. Given we are searching for a Dwemer machine and not a Dumber one, I would venture your guess is correct, but I make no assumption. It's common sense. If you build a temple, you will draw the devout. If you make a key, it will find its way to the right door. The artifacts are here because the chamber is here. The presence of one proves the existence of the other. Anyhow, it's not your concern. I know you're smart, but for this task you need to think like you're two carats short of a potage. We'll have to work on the assumption that the Red God obtained the attunement sphere. Luckily, we have one advantage. This is key. I don't know if it unlocks the door or chest, but it will undoubtedly lead you to the lexicon. I will head to Mazinchula to meet Cameron while you retrieve it. Afterward, you'll rendezvous with us at the nearby settlement of Stonehills. Here are my notes on the lexicon, but don't worry, you won't need to solve any puzzles. Just explore the ruins like you did this cave, ferociously. I trust you know how to proceed? Scratch your nose if you agree. No, scratch that. The idea, not the nose. Just nod if you're confused. Good.
world? Nakast! It is a satisfactory day, don't you agree? Databanks corrupted. Memory retrieval malfunction. Archive not found. I am doing well, Master. I've been busy cleaning up my memory banks that are full of unwanted clutter and nonsense. I came across an extensive report on Dwemer drainage pipes, believe it or not. I never knew that my original creators had such interests. There is also a large collection of unremarkable schematics for mobile battle armors. Who would want that? It was good to see you, Master.
What? Now cast! What do you want, no drinker? No, I remember. You're the new member of the Companions. We've stopped. What is it? Just remember our bargain. To the next fight. Sugar and sand. They said Butchered meat here is bloody. I prefer mine charred.
Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, what? Sorry, I was thinking. Maybe... No, it's a stupid question. Okay, well, don't laugh. I was wondering if, like, a wolf got bitten by a werewolf or something. But would he become a person? Never mind, it sounds stupid just coming out of my mouth. I was getting sick of your face anyway. Just as I predicted you would. I told Scotty only a true ignoramus would come to Mzinchula after I made it clear it was another ruse. Yet you do serve a purpose. When we reintroduce ourselves to the Dwemer, they will wonder why it took so long for us to find them. And I need only point them to Exhibit A, the lump of orichalcum you call Brain. Ha! You're one to talk, Cameron. If it weren't for that bodyguard of yours, you wouldn't last two seconds in a Dwemer room. Well, I'll have you know I've hired someone just as capable. You mean Falcus? That fool isn't fit enough to fetch Scotty's slippers. No, Falcus is dead, as are all his predecessors. My new bodyguard, however, is alive and well and has a presence for both of us. Have you done as I asked? Good. Now that will depend entirely on our friend's reaction to it. Hand it over and we'll see. So, Cameron, it appears it's my time to gloat, but I'm going to refrain. After all, you still have the spear. This game ends in a draw. At this point, I don't mind sharing the credit. This is bigger than both of us. No, this is my discovery. I don't need your fake lexicon. I... I already found the real one, in some ruin you haven't heard of. Is that your attempt at a bluff? Do you think I would just toss the lexicon away? Your lips and your eyes are having a disagreement, and it's clear which one is telling the truth. We'll see who's bluffing when I take both the lexicon and the spear to Aftan. Come, Scotty. We have Dwemer to find. Well, I'm afraid that's as close to a concession as we're going to get. It's no coincidence the chamber is in Aftan. And like it or not, the Red God needs us. In fact, she doesn't like it at all. That's what makes it all the more sweeter. As usual, you and I are in full agreement. Although, admittedly, it's easier to want to compromise within the presence of that bodyguard. As a result, we should do our best not to provoke them. Let me do the talking. A confrontation will not end well with one so capable by her side. Your attempts to mask your adoration are unnecessary. I'm sure you were just as impressed as I was. But we can't worry about that. Hopefully we'll be able to solve this dilemma without violence. You lead the way. Althan is just a few days' journey east. It's better if we let Cameron get there first, so she can mull over her choices, or lack thereof. 
Sorley and I are just here to make sure the mine is run properly. Never have expected to wind up living in a place like this. But the money's good. Well, do you see now what your stubbornness has wrought? You could have gotten yourself killed. Ha! Scotty would have killed them all had your bodyguard not intervened. That's beside the point. You still need the lexicon to work the chamber. Isn't it time we end this feud? I don't need your help. I'm tired of our colleagues saying I rode your coattails. And I tire of people saying I would have never gotten anywhere without your assistance. But you know what? Your people and my people, they're both right. Whether it's as rivals or colleagues, we are where we are because of each other. And while others may argue over who gets the credit, there's no denying this discovery belongs to the both of us. <sighs> Maybe you're right. I suppose it would be just as unsavory to steal the lexicon as it would be to share the credit. Fine, we can work together, but on one condition. I want to be the first one to use the chamber. It's only fair to when I found it. Yes, yes, of course. Here, take a look to come. For once, I don't mind following your act. Julianos, look at this place. Scotty, take the sphere and the lexicon and place it in the machine. This is it. We've done it. After all this time, thousands of years, we're going to make contact with the Twimmer. Us! It's an amazing day, Cameron. I know we've had our differences, but for now, they all seem so insignificant. You're right. Now, hero, you know what? Our the hero me to want claims of our hero. I want you to stand heart. here with me. Do you mean it? This isn't one of your tricks, is it? 
No, not at all. I, tell I want us to share this discovery. You. I'm the sure there's room on this platform comes. for the two of us. No one is going anywhere. Scotty, stop fooling around. Hurry up and place the lexicon into the device. No. I am not yours to command. Nor will you fool these people any longer, servant of Mazanok. Scotty, what in oblivion are you talking about? Scotty. There is no Scotty. He was a figment of my imagination. Until I made him a reality of yours. No. You speak to the first hero of the fourth era. Champion of Mundus. Two Tails. The Dwarven Boy. Dwarvenborn? What nonsense is this? Don't play coy with me, servant of the God Eater. I know as well as you that this teleportation device was designed specifically to bring Mazanok's generals into Skyrim. Rald Bethar, Mazankalnift, and Ulfdand. They are not places. of the apocalypse but i have disabled your device with my machine hand watch as i press this button and nothing happens hamlin stop that fool before he breaks something Done. The button seems stuck. Not stuck. Deactivated. Permanently disabled by my machine hand. As will all the devices in this temple of evil. All that's left is to deactivate you. Are you all right? I'm alive. Thank the divines. Still in a state of shock, but alive. Why would Scotty do this? And how did he disable the machine? I'm alive. Let's not jump to conclusions. Thank the divines. We may have been already damaged. Still in a state of shock, really know where but alive. They might just send us Why would Scotty do this? And how did he so disable the machine? Different. What could have possessed Scotty to turn on his own client? Thankfully, whatever disease he caught hasn't spread to you, or I'd be deader than a Drago crypt. Interesting. Historically, that isn't entirely out of the realm of possibility, given what happened to the Falmer. Although, yes, Scotty was completely insane, there's no denying that. It will be a difficult task, seeing as our knowledge of Dromer engineering is as spotty as a freckled leopard. We'll need financial backing, but I'm sure someone in Winterhold will grant us the funding. Despite everything that's happened, the machine must still be studied. To be honest, it doesn't look anything remotely like a propylon chamber. Which is exciting in its own right. Once we figure out what it is the device actually does, we can start on the path to getting it done. Either way, your work is done. Whatever this discovery yields, you were instrumental in delivering it. Take this gold if you agree. Good.